the Carl B. Phillips Show. Hosted by me, Carl B. Phillips, Uncle Carl. The Carl B. Phillips Show. Get ready for another great conversation on the Carl B. Phillips Show. Welcome to the Carl B. Phillips Show. I am Carl B. Phillips, Uncle Carl. Today's guest is from Detroit, Michigan. He's a musician, songwriter, recording artist, father, and he's a part of a great Detroit gospel music legacy. His latest release, The The Graduation, is a collection of high-energy gospel music. Please welcome to the Carl B. Phillips Show, my friend, my brother, Lou Lucas. (laughs) Hey, how you doing? I'm doing good to you. What's going on, man? Nothing much. I'm just hanging on in there. Just hanging on there. Well, that's yeah. it. If you can't hold on, hang on. Right. Now, before we start, I have this random question for you. Oh, when wow. When you're in a store like Walmart or Target, do you prefer the self checkout lane or the lane with a cashier? Self checkout. And why? Because I feel like it can go by quicker. You can go by quicker. What, what, what if there's a line of people at the self checkout? It's still gonna go by quicker. <laughs> and then another reason I hate when uh they put like two or three, like two or one thing in a bag, and mm-hmm. I'd be like, You want me to carry all this stuff with 15 bags? So <laughs> self-checkout, I could just put about seven things in the bag and I'd be good. So are you the person that when you get home, you only want to make one trip from the car to the house? Yes. Yes. Okay, I, I, I can feel you on that. Uh, as I've gotten yes. older, though, it's like, uh, I want to carry all that heavy stuff. Let me get, <laughs> give me a couple. Of, if if I'm buying five items and it's $50, I'm going to put each item in a bag because I need to feel like I got something. <laughs> right. Is that how's going to go? Uh, you were born into a legacy of gospel music. Talk about your heritage and the influence that legacy has had on your music. Um. Oh, you feel like that. It makes it so... Yeah. Um, I have, I have, I, okay. I do come from a music family, um, on both sides, on my mom's side and my dad's side. My mom is a professional background singer and my dad is a, you know, professional organist, producer, bass player, keys, all that good stuff. So I do come from a great root of music, but with me, I try to take what my family did and twix and make a different twist to it. That makes sense. That make that makes sense, which kind of leads me into my next question. Did you feel pressure to go into gospel music based on the legacy, or is it an honor of for you to continue that legacy? Um, no, I didn't feel pressure. Actually, my parents really didn't pressure me to play gospel music. Mm-hmm. Um, I did go to school for like jazz and all that kind of stuff. I was really into jazz for a while, but then as I got older and started playing outside my church, it's what got me like, oh yeah, I really like gospel music. Like I really like gospel music. So no, to answer your question, no, it was not a pressure at all. You talked about your father, um, Tony Lucas who is one of Detroit's finest musicians. What are some of the things you learned about being a musician from your father? Um, honestly, just discipline. <laughs> my, my dad really didn't teach me a lot uh, plan-wise. A lot of stuff I just caught on my own or I watched other people, but Discipline is really what I could say that he taught me. Yeah, kind of, kind of expand on what that discipline and if if you so, um, for example, like if I'm playing it, if I was if I was playing drums, and if I want to do something, it might not be the right place. Okay, like it might it might be too much or it might not be called for at that moment. So he taught me like, hey, when you playing this, then you got to feel the song. You got to make the song go somewhere. You got to set it up for the next part. You don't just play because it it sounds good to you. Mm -hmm. You got to make it sound good to the people, blah, 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 blah. So that's what I'm saying, like discipline. Even with me playing keys, because honestly, my daddy just really found out I can play keys for real in the pandemic. Oh, wow. 
<laughs> yeah, like when I, when I was younger, he I only played like shout music with him. Like I never played like songs or full chords. He didn't know I could play full chords until the pandemic. So is that why you were surprised when you won the Detroit Gospel Music Award for being a keyboardist? Yes. <laughs> I, I was like, whoa. Yeah. I really was. I was definitely surprised about that. You know, you, you are an award-winning artist now. Um, Detroit yeah. Music Awards, Rhythm of Gospel. What does winning those awards mean to you? Um, it means to me that people are starting to pay attention, pay attention to my craft, my gift, and my ministry. Um, so it's just amazing to see how, you know, I come, like, again, I do come from a music family. So it's amazing to see how people outside recognize who I am and outside listen to my music or outside watch a video of me playing or anything like that. So it's just more of a wow. I I know I do stuff, but it, to me, it's like normal life. So it's just normal for you to do it, but you're kind of surprised now that you're being recognized for it. Yes, exactly, exactly. You, uh, you're a father. I am. I am my father. Um, my so, son' name is Blue Jay. Blue Jay. Okay, so let, let me back up. I've known you as Blue all your life. What is your real name, if you don't mind sharing that? So my name is Blue because my full name is Brandon Lucas Underwood. Oh, so that's where Blue comes from. Yes, Blue okay. comes from my actual name. Okay. Thank you yes. for explaining that because I've, I've been like, I have I could not figure out how how Brandon came out of blue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because people people be thinking. So some people think it's either two things. They think it's in my favorite color, or they think just Brandon Lucas. And it's like no, it's really Brandon Lucas Underwood B L U. You got smart marketing. Look at you. Let's go back and talk about you being a father. How yes. is being a father? change your perspective on life um it actually it makes me think outside of the box mm -hmm. um like again it's me especially me knowing i come from a music family and what my parents have did for me i wanted to give my son a further push mm -hmm. so on my first um ep i allowed my son to sing on the graduation record He's playing like the percussion. So when he get older, he'll have an experience of what to do. That same discipline I was talking about earlier. It's a, it's a discipline thing. So now he gets older, he's going to be like, well, I know how to play this. I know how to do this. I know how to read this. I know how to mix. I know how to produce. I know how to write. So as he grow, even if he go into secular music or if he go into jazz or pop, whatever genre he decides he want to go to or class, Classical musical, he can he have an understanding of, hey, as a young guy, young African American, I can still do this, I can still do that, wow. because I come from my father, my grandfather, my extended family, my godfather, my grandparents, etc. Who are some of the people that have poured into you like you're pouring into your son now? Um. Well, believe it or not. One of the reasons I play the organ in front of people is because of Joseph DeRico. Oh, wow. Yep. Joseph DeRico and my Uncle Larry. i never forget. I was playing. Well, my Uncle Larry called me to play for my auntie, Callahan. And he was like, yeah, can you play organ for her? And I'm like, yeah, whatever. You, you know, I don't really play like that. I played at Faith Tabernacle. And this is my first time playing out ever. This is in like 2015. Mm -hmm. my, I I never played the organ or any keys outside of Craig and Morgan. Like they only knew me as a style and play shop music. I never played like no backup chords or nothing. So I get there, I play, I back her up, everything. And Joe was like, you should start taking this serious. Like you should start like 
doing it for real. And I'm like, no, nah, you know, I'm really into drums. Like, you know, I can play bass a little bit, but I'm really into drums. And he like, no, nah, you're going to sit here for a couple of months. And every week for free, I played at that church. Hmm. And every week he'll send me a song. And like, learn this song, learn this song. And I, I can't play in that key, learn this song. And he made me play the organ until I was able to at least pad the song through. Wow. And from there, I started like actually playing and arranging and all that kind of stuff. So if it was not for them to really getting me to play for real, I would probably just be known as a drummer still or a guy that could play bass a little bit. Well, you know, I, I have to um, say that I'm proud that you are a drummer on my video. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy it. I enjoy it. I enjoy it. I, I'm learning so much about you. You know, we've you know talked a little bit in passing and stuff. You know, you, you see me out in public and told me that I looked angry and that I needed to smile more. <laughs> And you know now when I see you, I'm like, okay, let me make sure I'm smiling because Blue gonna check me if I'm not. Smiling. <laughs> <laughs> you have been um, very open and transparent about the struggles you've had in life. You know, being homeless, um, some other struggles that you've gone through, sleeping in your car with your son. Talk about how music gave you an escape for some of those struggles. Um. So I think it's one of those things I know, I know I'm very talented. Like, I don't, I don't never doubt that at all. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things is just because someone is talented does not mean that they don't have to um, go through something to get what you like mm -hmm. or where, or what you hear or what you feel like is a, um, a dope song or a dope sermon or whatever the case may be. So music really helped me get through a tough season in my life, which I'm kind of glad I went through that season um, because out of that season, Good Place came along and Good Place have really helped people and minister to people and push people through a different a situation that they probably was not expecting. And when I sit back and think about when Nate sent me this song, he sent me like three songs. Let's start with that. He sent me like three songs and Good Place really got with me. Cause at that time in my life, I was really coming out of that bad season mm -hmm. and I was getting to a good place. I was getting to a place where I can, you know, afford things and buy this and buy that and all that kind of stuff. and. Yeah, it really, the Lord, I feel like the Lord do things very funny. Like mm -hmm. he knew, he knew Good Place was going to be a song. I didn't think about Good Place because again, Nate sent me like three other songs and I'm like, oh, this song really going to be good. This song really good. But Good Place kept sticking out. It kept sticking out to me. And I'm like, well, let's, let me flip this around. Let me make it a little more of this and a little more of that. And yeah. Everybody go through something for a reason. We may not know what the reason is, but it's for a reason. Good Place is one of my favorite. Because you know, every time I see him, like I'm in a good place. That's <laughs> me. I lie with you. Talk about the relationship that you and Nate Martin have built over the years. So I met Nate, um, twenty nineteen Watch Night Service. And, you know, we met, whatever. We met in passing, kind of, really. And then we actually started connecting more. And then a pandemic happened. So mm -hmm. when the pandemic happened, people were doing these virtual concerts and all this kind of stuff, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, Nate, you should come. You know, you should come, blah, blah, blah. He came and he sung with me for my virtual concert. And from there, he had an event. I went. Then he was he supposed to went on tour, the tour got shut down. So we just ended up being like a relationship, building a relationship. So I said, you know, I'm doing a recording. So we did the recording. And then he did a recording. So I was part of his recording. And now we are at a place where um we merge our groups together. 
Wow. Yes. So if I'm in Chicago and I can't bring all my singers, his singers sing. If he's here, he can't bring all his singers, my singers sing. And even with our musicians, we, we merge our musicians together. Um, we really have made like a Midwest brotherhood. And even with our groups, we even bring the group names together. Like if we do something, we say like Nate Martin and Sign Music or Blue Lucas and Sign Music or something like that. Uh, man, I love Nate's project. I, I yes. think he's, he's one of the dopest artists out right now. And, I mean, <laughs> I, I love him. You know, just, just great music. And it's, it's good to hear that you two of you have that brotherhood that, because you know, a lot of times in gospel music, they talk about how people can't get along, you know. It, it, you know, you're doing your thing here. He's doing his thing in Chicago. But to know that there's a, a young generation that's out there now that's that's partnering like that, man, it's awesome. And I salute both of you for that. Thank you, man. Thank um, you. Let's talk a little bit more about Blue Lucas and music. They were founded in 2017. You released a single, Jesus Chant. Yes. Talk about the transition from being a musician to having your own group. So, um... Honestly, this is how Blue Lucas and Music actually started. We started in 2014 as my 21st birthday concert. So I kind of branched um, some of the singers out of, G out of Carlos Whitlow and GP. And we did the little concert thing. I really didn't like it for real, so I stopped. And then um, I rebranded in 2017. And at that time, I was more into like the musician. You know, I was really, I was really into being a musician. Mm -hmm. I was playing for other artists and college choirs, and but I always wanted to have a different kind of thing that I couldn't do with people, groups or choirs. So I came up and rebranded Blue um, Blue Lucas and Music. And I came up with the name music because I didn't want it to just be like a spiritual kind of thing. I wanted to really be like, what are we getting out of this? Like, mm -hmm. what are we, what, what, like, I don't know what to expect. I don't know what they're going to look like. I don't know if it's going to be somebody. Is it going to be a band? Is it going to be singers? Blah, blah, blah. So if you notice my first single, it doesn't have no face like no picture of anyone you just gotta buy it and listen to it and see what the music is and see what the music is that's wise because a lot of times um we look at the picture and we go oh i'm that, that's gonna be this style of music because of the way the picture looks yeah. uh, i remember one time there was a, a a young lady that was on a cover and somebody said i would buy this CD just because the way she looks on the cover. I don't care how the music sounds. I'm just going to buy it because she looks pretty. So that's why it's marketing. Another random question. Let's if go. you could permanently eliminate one of these chores, which would it be? Washing dishes, cooking meals, dusting, cleaning the bathroom, or washing clothes? Washing dishes. <laughs> I hate it. You hate washing? Why is that? I hate that? it. I hate washing dishes. I hate it. Anything else? I clean. I mop. I wipe the ceilings from the top to bottom. Walls. We get all the little corners. Dishes. I hate it. Hate it. So it sound like your son is the dishwasher at the house. Even him or that dishwasher. I put the stuff in there, and I hate washing dishes. Now, for me, I hate cleaning the bathroom. I'll do it, but I hate it because, like, it's just like, yeah, it's just too much to have to clean the bathroom. Your new project is called The Graduation. Explain yes. the meaning behind The Graduation. So, another marketing thing, we go, we do everything based off school. So, our first concert was um, called Homeroom. And then we had our EP called The First Hour. Um, if we're not doing our annual concert, we do a spring break concert. Um, our virtual concert was called, I forgot what it was called. It was something with summer school. 
And then when we do like engagements, we call it hallway. You know, everything is based off school. So now this year I would be 30 and I feel like it's a great time to graduate and go into a higher level spiritually, mentally, um, even with the music. So we decided to do the graduation and give you a mixed style of music. You don't just have one style of music. You got um, churchy, you got choir, you got real praise and worship. You got high praise and worship. You got um, catchy little songs. You got a vibe. It's very different styles of gospel music in this record that anyone can sing. You know, that that was the thing when I listened to the graduation that I admired was the variety of styles of music. You know, like you said, you 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 bump a little bit. You did some Timothy Wright, you know, The Good Place. You did some worship. Talk about some of the uh, featured artists that you brought in to help bring that to life. So all my features except one was from Chicago. So we had um, Jahari. He sings for the rest of my life. We have Antoine. He sings Trust in You. We have Charles. He sings um, Lift Him Up. Um, Nate, of course, is on Good Place. And then our only Detroit artist is Kevin Stewart. And he sings um, Yes. And the rest of our the rest of the features are in the group. We have Chris Parker, um, Nisi Cam, um, Yamani Jones, Remington Lloyd, Danny, and Armani. Man, you 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 money out of Flint. That, that's a bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> no joke, man. You, let God in. Let God in. <laughs> God, love it. Let God. <laughs> man, you had some great things. I, I did make a portion of the session that night. I mean, the place was packed. You know, y'all was rocking. And one Thank of the you. things that I, I remember Craig Mizell saying that when the night was over the stems that you gave him to work with were really great. How much time did you guys put into perfecting uh, the background and the music before you were able to, uh, before the session, so that you'll have that perfection when it was ready to uh, um, master? Doing real, real work, like putting time in for real, for real, like two and a half months. We started like right after my birthday in August, like the end of August. And we went all the way into the week of, actually the night before of the recording. Wow. Uh, we have to talk about Craig Mizell. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I call him my nephew. I call him, he's like, to me, almost the Barry Gordy of, oh, God, music, so of all the things that he's doing. Talk about your relationship with Craig. So Craig actually produced Jesus Chant. He was my first real producer, um, and we just became cool. You know, he like a big bro to me. He's a he's definitely a mentor for sure. He helps me along the way, even when I do my uh, my own producing with other people and playing for other artists. I always run to Craig for advice and information and all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm currently a part of his label, Mazel Production. Um, I have been with him since 21. Um, yeah, I was just, anytime Craig called me, I'm always there because Craig have did a lot of great things for me with my career and with my personal life. And I'm actually, I'm grateful for him and everything he does. I cannot believe that our time is up. I want to <laughs> thank you again for uh, stopping by the Carl B. Phillips show. How can people follow you on social media? How can they um, contact you? And how can they get your music? So you can find my music on all digital outlets, Apple Music, Spotify, Pandora, Google Play, YouTube, all that good stuff. Um, my name is on every social media platform, Blue Lucas, B-L-U-L-U-C-A-S. You can find me on Facebook, uh, TikTok, Snapchat, Instagram, everything. Um, yeah, that's basically about it. So we have about 30 seconds left. Okay. I want you to speak to someone that's in a place of struggle 
about how they can get to a good place. Pray, ask God for direction, ask him to guide you through the season, ask him why are you in this season? And once the season is up, what's going to be the outcome? Wow. What's going to be the outcome after the season? That's a, you know what? You can play some bump music right there. <laughs> Again, everybody, thank you for um, listening to the Carl B. Phillips Show. I am Carl B. Phillips. Again, my guest, Blue Lucas. Make sure you get his music, get to graduation, check out um, The Good Place. I'm just excited to be able to talk with this young man and what he, what's going on in his life. Just a reminder, remember to work like you don't need the money, love like you've never been hurt, and dance like no one's watching you. God bless until we have an opportunity to meet again. The Carl B. Phillips Show. Thank you for listening to the Carl B. Phillips Show. For more information, go to carlbphillips.com. The Carl B. Phillips Show. Follow Carl B. Phillips on Instagram so we can stay in contact with each other.